Well, hi everyone. I'm John Redlin with a review of NWA Presents Paul Bosch's Houston Wrestling. It's great that they were able to find this classic episode complete with the original commercials. Boy, so many cheesy commercials. And I'm not that familiar with Paul Bosch's, you know, Houston territory. He ran in the Sam Houston Coliseum, and I know that he was very revered among a lot of people. He worked with uh, Bill Watts from Mid-South Wrestling and a whole bunch of other people, and he had a lot of talent for a lot of years because he had been in wrestling and involved in wrestling in some form or another since the 1930s. And they go into that in a little bit of a news piece and everything. And this was really, really cool to see this stuff. But also it does present, some, you know, it's very much a time capsule for like how wrestling used to be. It also shows how sometimes maybe the modern product isn't all that bad and that while it was cool to see all these old school promos, and see this stuff. It was a gold mine for, like, you know, the classic footage. It also shows how much wrestling has advanced. Maybe not evolved, but technologically advanced since then. So, how was this episode? It was fun. I also didn't figure out the exact timeline, but I figured late 78, early 79, because superstar Billy Graham had left the WWF and in late 78 and then uh, toured with, well, you know, wrestled in Houston and then also did other NWA territories and worked in Japan and then floundered sometime after, you know, like the early 80s because, oh yeah, he abused steroids. Don't worry, I'm going to talk about Superstar Billy Graham a little bit later. There were a lot of promos and a lot of ads and, boy, those those old school ads, they were so goddamn funny. And there were two matches and it was a way to just hype people to get them to go to the Sam Houston Coliseum to see three big matches that were going to be happening. We had Dusty Rhodes kick off in a, a stand back powder ad, stand, not stand, but stand back powder ad. And it was just really cool to see like Dusty Rhodes when he was still kind of Texan Dusty Rhodes and just coming off of uh, Eddie Graham wrestling and all that and being the American dream. And it was just really, really cool to see. Uh, Blue Ribbon Sausage ad also, and that was really, really funny. I don't know why. We had Paul Bosch's uh, narration while footage plays. And then we get the Eyes of Texas, a news piece where it talks about the Sam Houston Coliseum, Paul Bosch. Uh, and Houston Wrestling. Uh, we see a ton of old school pics of Paul Bosch and various others in his office. And that's just a goddamn goldmine of just so much history right there. That was really good. Uh, his career began in 1932. Uh, he made his first trip to Houston in 1942. He was in World War II for three years, one month, and 27 days. He was injured during the war. Um, returned to wrestling, but he had a car accident that led him to uh, begin announcing in 1948. And then Lots of old school wrestling picks and stuff like that during this news piece. And in 1949, had a wrestling broadcast where their first uh, you know, sporting event was wrestling. Uh, you know, this radio broadcast had wrestling. And it's just, it was really, really cool to see and hear from Paul Bosch. He was very humble, very giving. He really appreciated the, uh, you know, the sport of wrestling. He recognizes that all sport is theater, but that wrestling just has that special way to draw people in. Um and Paul Bosch bought into Houston when, Mor uh, when Morgan Siegel died in 1966, and I believe he was the original owner. Again, more people that know more about Houston wrestling would know about that, but I'm going based off this news piece. So we then get the Houston wrestling graphic after this news piece is done with cheesy music and the sponsors and the ads, and oh my god, oh my god, the stereo tape recorder with playback, all the, the microwave oven, so much cheesy late 70s, early 80s fashion, depending on this era. It was just so goddamn funny. It was just so funny. It was, it was so cool they were able to preserve this stuff in there. And then we, uh, so Paul Bosch then does, you know, stand-up interview and talks about uh, Mil Mascaris versus Harley Race and a return match for the NWA Championship where Mil Mascaris had won by DQ, but he did not win the championship by DQ, even though sometimes that was a rule where you could win the championship by that. Gino Hernandez versus Bruiser Brody for, I believe, the American... Uh, cha uh, wrestling championship or American Heavyweight Championship, or maybe it was the Texas Heavyweight Championship. There were a lot of championships that kind of, you know, like muddle in my head there because Texas had a lot of them. And then he hypes a midget match that was going to happen. And then Boyd Pierce doing the ring announcing, and it's two out three falls match, Texas Heavyweight Championship. Um, Sico Delico, who I believe was related to Mil Mascaris, versus gorgeous Gino Hernandez. Seen earlier, Gino Hernandez is really, really cool because he made his debut in 1973. Um, and did some really good stuff and really did get over in Houston, and that's led to him going to world class, even though he wrestled in other places, like Southwest Championship Wrestling for, I believe, I believe Joe Blanchard. 
and this is pretty cool. Gary Hart was the manager of Gino Hernandez, which is no shock. They were very tight. Gary saw a lot in Gino, was very sad when he died, as many were at that time. And if you haven't seen the Dark Side of the Ring episode about Gino Hernandez and his death, oh boy, fucking hell, that that's something else. Uh, Bronco Lubic was the referee, and this match was fine. This was the better of the two matches that we got to see. Uh, clear, uh, the mask, Seco uh, uh, Delico did slip at one point off the ropes, as wrestling can be tough, and those ropes do get slippery. And he does uh, later hit a crossbody to win the first fall, and then we get two human sofas to plug furniture. One was like an older guy, and the other was his son that looked like a freaking brick house. It was absolutely amazing. Jewelry ad, mobile ad, the mo the mobile home ad was absolutely hilarious because the guy, it sounded like he was voicing ads from back in the 50s. And then Gino attacks before the bell, starts second fall, and after some action, back elbow, one, two, three. So there we go, it's one, one. We get more ads, third fall, weird finish because we get a DQ finish, and then uh, Mark Lewin, pretty popular guy in the territory days, <laughs> runs in, attacks Gino, and then attacks Gary because Gary tried to attack him with his shoe. He, call he says, come here, pussycat, I I'll kill you. Mark Lewin with the uh, quote of the year, I assume. But then we get more jewelry and TV rental ads. We get a Harley Race promo classic. He talks about the rematch of Mil Mascaris, going all over the world and having to hear about this. And he was going to stop all this talk and he was going to beat Mil Mascaris straight up. Yeah, like Mil Mascaris is going to do a goddamn job. And then Mil Mascaris interviewing about the title match and all that. And Paul Bosch interviewing him. And then Bruiser Brody interview, fired up as always. And he wants to win the championship from Gino Hernandez for a fifth time. Bruiser Brody, not somebody you want to fucking mess with. Then Gino Hernandez promo calls him Bruiser Brody, you big stupid water buffalo. Because Gino Hernandez just loved to egg people on because he was really that good. Then hurls Spanish at people and then he slams Andre because there's this like bronze, uh, you know, thing of like Andre's hand and arm and he just puts it in there and it just calls him a big dummy or something like that. And then we get Paul Bosch interviewing Andre and this is really good stuff. I encourage you guys to check out this episode. But. Andre talks traveling the world, playing football or soccer, as we call it. Rugby, boxing a little. Talks about his family, how his parents were normal size. I think it's like, I think he said his uncle or his grandfather. I think his grandfather was like pretty big. Um, and, you know, talking about this, talking about, you know, wrestling all over the world. And that, you know, he he respects Paul Bosch. Paul Bosch respects him. They shake hands. We then, again, see that bronze edition of Andre's hand. Boyd Pierce does ring announcing for Superstar Billy Graham versus Tiger Conway Jr. Two out of three falls match. Okay, you're you putting uh, Billy Graham in a two out of three falls match. I know that was a staple of a lot of shows, two out of three falls. But look, you cannot tell me that Billy Graham in a two out of three falls match, even in 1978, was a good idea. And Sweet Christ is the 80% bear hugs. And thankfully, um, well, actually not thankfully, but thankfully Conway at least got one fall. But unfortunately, the bear hug, the first fall went on forever. Graham won with the bear hug. Um, and then a flying headbutt won the second fall for Conway, and then a chair spot in the corner where they had done a reversal and Conway had gone into the chair, got the victory for Graham. So yeah, Graham gets the victory, and then Paul Bosch closes the show by hyping up the Sam Houston Coliseum show. It's going to be happening with the matches I talked about, so I don't know if they're going to be doing these in episodic order, but it's cool at the NWA uh, YouTube channel put these, uh, you know, put this up, and if they're going to supplement, you know, this this whole thing going on, the pandemic going on with classic footage like this, I'm all for it. I think it'll be really goddamn good. But guys, in, in closing, I want to present one little thing really quickly. Because sometimes he likes to appear and he likes, you probably heard him in the background. If you don't know, this is Sir. This is a cat that I got about almost three years ago. Adopt, don't shop. Um, he's a really, really good cat, rescue cat. And sometimes pets can really help, especially in this time of need. Okay, you want, you want, you, you want to behave now? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, by the way, he liked Paul Bosch's ring announcing. So anyway, guys, agree, disagree with what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.